Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ivan Rievsky. In this video I will react to Roman's content from the Nullfikers channel, aka the only good Russian, and try to explain why some Russians hate Russia even more than anybody else, and why his actions are hurting Russian people around the world. You can consider this an open letter from a regular viewer. The problem is that there are few, very few channels of people from Russia about Russia on English language YouTube. The biggest ones can be counted on the fingers of one hand. And Roman is the biggest of them, the most influential. He's been in this field longer than anyone else. Roman is definitely smart, really smart and talented. If we are not talking about his music and his terrible fake laugh. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> but intelligent. However, in the last two years, his activity has changed a lot because of the beginning of the so-called special operation. It seems to me that without even realizing it, Roman, who's been smashing Putin and his government in his video for years, has become less and less able to distinguish between two things, the Russian state and the Russian country, his country and its people. We'll start with his latest video and continue as it goes, cause I don't really have a script. Tucker Carlson, after his brilliant interview with Putin, where he made Putin look like some old man obsessed with justifying his actions through old dusty history books and archival letters from the 15th century. So that you don't think that I'm inventing things. I'll give you these documents. For some reason Roman didn't like it, but that's okay. So Tiger did a series of videos about Moscow to show Russian life under sanctions. He showed us clean and neat metro stations, Russian McDonald's and went grocery shopping. So he buys some food over 44 products worth $100. He wonders if the price is small. I think it's considering that Russia is the most sanctioned country in history of the world. For example, in North Korea, it would cost you like five times more to buy the same shit, especially coke or sneakers or alcohol, cigarettes. But here, everything is more or less acceptable. That Tiger's point. But Roman goes mad. I've noticed uh, when Roman is angry and has nothing to say, he often uses this fake laugh, uh, kind of psychological defense reaction, just like in this case. <laughs> I'm sorry, he just looks like a child in the shop, like a kid shopping with his mom who's just so lost and who doesn't know what, what to get next. He essentially looks like he's never shopped for groceries in his life before. And I think that's actually the case because like Tucker Carlson was born with a silver spoon up his ass or whatever. He grew up rich, so he probably never actually shopped for himself and pushed the fucking shopping cart, clearly. Look at that. Oh, come on. <laughs> what is this? What is this? Why is my guy so like, why is he like busting in his pants over like some brats? First he compares, for some reason, the minimum wage in the United States and Russia and then draws conclusions based on the fact that all people in Russia live on that minimum wage. <laughs> We're comparing to the United States here, right? I guess the minimum wage in the United States is well over a thousand dollars. The minimum wage in Russia is like $300 or something like that. Yes, guys, there's like quite a bit of a difference between uh, salaries and wages in America and Russia. So perhaps this is the reason why groceries cost so much cheaper compared to uh, <laughs> the United States. Roman knows it well. I'm sure a lot of you knows it well. He's not a stupid guy, just like you. But anyway, minimum wage is probably the most misleading indicator of a country's standard of living. The wages in general. Wages uh, do not reflect the level of purchasing power of the population because the prices of different products 
is not the same in different countries, especially locally produced food, housing, medicine and services. The same food that Tucker says uh, he would buy in the US four times more expensive. Of course he's wrong and everything should be compared in a set of indicators. But Roman is no better and he compares only salaries, even minimum wages, but not the cost of services. For example, put an ordinary filling in Russian dentistry can cost you about 3000 rubles, which is equal to $33. In the US, it's hundreds of dollars or more. I spent exactly 1000 rubles to remove a wisdom tooth, which is $11 and exactly 5 minutes of my time. I went into the office, gave 1000 rubles for an aesthetic and they took it out. In the US, it's how much? Hundreds of dollars? More? A taxi ride for a couple of miles in Russia will cost you two five dollars. In the US it's what? Eight fifteen or so? Correct me in comments. I'm not even touching the rent. The price is different in times. I'm not talking about taxes, which in Russia for an ordinary worker is 30% of his salary. In the US it's, I'm sure it's more. Most medical services in Russia are free. Make an appointment with a doctor, get an x-ray, MRI, EGC, gastroscopy. It's all free. In my 27 years of life, I've done all this many times. It's silly to compare only the cost of services, like Tucker did, without salaries. And as it's silly to compare salaries without the cost of services, like Roman did. Only that Tucker didn't draw a conclusion that Russia is a better place, Russia is better than the US. The minimum wage especially can be very different even in equally developed countries because it can be closer or further from uh, the average wage. For example, take the United States and Switzerland. In some regions, uh, the minimum wage in Switzerland can be up to uh, $4,500. Can we say that Swiss are four times richer than Americans. That's nonsense. Their average salaries, their median salaries, but we simply do not have an accurate indicator. PPP, GDP uh, per capita is most often used as the most objective one. For example, US and Switzerland is standing close, even if the minimum wage are so different in these countries. Russia by this indicator stands next to Turkey, Greece, Slovakia and Lithuania, not so far from Poland and Portugal. The average salary is biased uh, because we add up all the poor and rich and divide equally. The median salary in Russia is around 50,000 rubles a month. This is not average, but the median. This is the amount of the actual average monthly wage per job, which is located exactly in the middle of the ranked range of payments. Exactly half of the population receives less than this amount and the other half receives more. This goes with my life experience. Uh, a friend of mine just recently got a job as a regular phone and SIM card salesman. No work experience, no education. He just stands behind his uh, cash register and gets just exactly 50,000 rubles a month. His first year on this job. Everybody can guess a job like that. This is clearly not the 20,000 rubles Roman was talking about. And he knows very well that most people in Russia don't live on 20,000 rubles. I just don't understand why he exaggerates so much. An important point. I agree it's not enough. I agree that people should not earn such pennies living in the most natural resource rich country. They could be much richer and happier and not in 10 years of development. No, already, like tomorrow, if the huge corruption disappeared. There is a huge gap between rich and poor and someone actually make these $250 a month and that's horrible. But here's a question for Roman. Would your world fucking crumble if you admitted that people in Russia don't fucking starve? Do you really think after that all the existential problems caused by this regime 
will disappear and your position is so weak that you need to cut the real incomes of Russians by more than half? Really? Would your world collapse if you admitted that Moscow, with its huge budgets, could keep its metro clean and robots could drive around the streets in Russia delivering food? Are you that insecure so you have to make up cool stories? To compare Russia and the United States and in the most stupid way you can imagine. Compare any country with Georgia where you live. They still got 8.5 dollars. 8.5 dollars. Official minimum wage. Let's be real, huh? Dude. Okay, they have some money, but what about Italian cheese? And I'm gonna say it, Russian grocery stores now suck compared to stores in the West. When it comes to like actual really good quality products and actually really well made cheese. So this would be all the good stuff like, you know, all the nice meats and cheeses and everything from like Italy and everything, you know, the good stuff. Mamma mia. These Russians, they drink water from puddles and eat snow. They don't even have Italian cheese in the store. Roman refuses to believe in Russian so much that he thinks Russia didn't learn how to make cheese in 10 years of food sanctions for, from uh, 2014 or wine. And this is Russian wine. It's from Crimea, which not only has the warm water naval base, of course. but also is the source of most of the grapes uh, in this part of Russia for wine. So it's apparently pretty good. Georgian wine clears, in my opinion. Yeah, Georgians can make wine, but these Russians... Meanwhile, Russia's sparkling wine house Abraudurso wins the Rising Star Award from the International Wine and Champagne Championship. But who cares? Russia wins dozens of medals in the International Wine and Spirits competition. That's more than Georgia, by the way. I didn't mean to begin a pissing contest, but still. Roman thinks Russians, by default, can do anything good. Because in his head, that would mean Putin is good. He will score points on that. Instead of, you know, being happy for your fellow citizens, Russia is awesome. Not because of, but in spite of the regime, they can create and achieve and in the wonderful future, we will build the best country in the world. But no, not Roman. Such moves are very popular among other Russian English speaking vloggers for some, for some reason. Here is, uh, for example, Natasha from Russia. What a nickname. A girl from the ass of the ass of Russia who speaks as if she's about to cry any moment. Hello, everyone. In this video, I will make conclusions about the year of 2022. She's trying a Russian Starbucks. Small latte and caramel frappuccino. Sorry, frappe. Okay, let's try. <gasps> really bad. But I wouldn't say that I will come here every single day. It's okay. Kind of expected it to be better. I'm not that picky, but I don't like it. It's like plastic. I don't know. Maybe it was like this in the initial Starbucks. But the point of this video is to shit on the new Russian Stars coffee. And we are here for it. Oh, tastes like piss. Here's the news for you. It's the same employees. Same coffee machines, same coffee beans, Natasha, same milk and same recipes. You've been drinking this piece all your life and licking your lips in happiness. But not now. Now it's got a different logo. It's, it's, it's Russian. Disgusting. Roman reviews uh, Coke's replacement in Russia. Coca-Cola products such as Fanta, Sprite and Coca-Cola itself, they're being produced and sold in Russia right now under the name Dobry. So instead of Coca-Cola, you have Dobry Cola. Instead of Sprite, you have Dobry Lemon Lime flavor. And instead of Fanta, you have Dobry Orange. But anyway, from what people says, the Fanta replacement and the Sprite replacement actually taste pretty similar. And people say the Cola tastes pretty similar, but it's not the same. Overall, I think it's a decent read. 
design and Dobre is already a brand that people know, but the taste not being there probably due to the lack of some ingredients that need to be shipped from the West or something that is now, you know, impossible to do because of sanctions. That's an L because obviously, you know, you want Coca-Cola to taste like Coca-Cola. Stinky bootleg fake Russian Coca made in some basement. Made in the same factories from the same products. All right, next one. I'm not gonna lie, that tastes pretty fucking real. I don't know, the second one actually tastes a lot like the real thing to me. Or maybe I'm just, I don't know, man. This <laughs> this is actually so difficult. <laughs> I feel like the weight of the world is on me right now. Like, this is this is a lot, okay. Mm -hmm. I think this one is also not real. I think this one is one of the, those these three, essentially. I, don't, I can't fucking tell which is which. He couldn't even tell the difference between a real Coke and not just the same one. No, not even the weak imitation. Why can't you just be happy for your fellow citizens who in these hard fucking times can take pleasure in little things like coke? There must be failure everywhere and in everything. Otherwise, Putin has won. These Russians, they can't even make uh, real coke. It's not only Tucker Carlson who, who's hated by Roman, because Roman is pro-LGBTQ, BLM, lefty, and Tucker is alt-right. It's literally everybody who says something good about Russia. And not just everybody, especially foreigners. Every fifth video on Roman's channel is dedicated to how he destroys foreigners who like Russia or life in Russia. He can't stand it. every fifth video. I've always found it really fascinating that there's Westerners out there who've been born in the first world democratic countries that end up simping for Russia and Putin and essentially saying that Russia is actually a more free country than America and the rest of the West. And usually these things are just said by people who live in a Moscow bubble where they live in the center of a huge European city and they essentially portray that the entirety of Russia is just like Moscow and that there's nothing really to complain about. And as a Russian who grew up in provincial Russia, the city of Chelyabinsk, I've always found all of this very ironic and hilarious. So in today's video guys, I just to react to even more z westness these are so-called downshifters people who have a country independent income from the internet freelancers bloggers who move to cheaper countries they prefer especially these ones uh, moved to russia because they don't like the woke culture where they're from they enjoy the local culture food people and hospitality as well as the prices Hello everybody, my name is Amos Ndukwe, and I'm from the United States of America, and I trade crypto and stocks, and I run a online casino. <laughs> okay, bro, just say you're a scammer. Why is he a scammer? For fuck's sake, why are you making shit up and labeling the man? He hasn't even said anything yet. Does it piss you off so much? Remember the difference, kids. These are respectable businessmen because they live in the US. And this is a dirty scammer because he loves Russia. Well, I think there are a lot of reasons. I believe that the woke culture is um, spreading and it's, an inf it's, it's really, it's a virus. And I believe that coming to Russia, you're, you're able to, you know, stay away from that, that toxicity, that nonsense. <laughs> Woo! Oh, you shouldn't have said that. Romans like Twitches already. That's a bad sign, he's already on the edge. I'm just, honestly, like I said, I'm treated better here. Like just, I'm invited to more events. Like I was at St. Petersburg Economic Forum last week. I was, you know. Z. <laughs> You're Z. Like, what do I have to say? University in Russia for a study of international relations I attended and I'm graduating right now. So I just feel like I'm treated better here and there's just more opportunity. Yeah, because you're literally like a white monkey. You're literally a white monkey in Russia. You, you do realize that, right? Like how they have white monkeys in China and they essentially want to please foreigners and create like a good environment for them so then they go and then spread Russian propaganda. Congrats, bro. You live in a bubble and your life is nothing like the lives of 140 million of other Russian people. I don't think you care though and I think you're fully aware of that actually. Over the next few minutes, Roman tries to explain to some American John who is happy about his life in Russia that he shouldn't be happy, that he should dive headfirst into politics and suffer from the special operation to corruption 
from unfreedom of speech to the legal system. What the fuck? Why the fuck should they think about it if it doesn't affect them? They're not citizens. They're guests here, spending their money and enjoying their time. You know, uh, I'm happy that you have visited our country. I'm genuinely happy to have you as just guests or residents. Thank you for daring to do so in this difficult time. And I'm glad you are not disappointed. I want to apologize for customs if they had treated you badly. I know they had. And also for Roman's words. This was highly inhospitable. And the funny thing here that all it's coming from Roman who lives in Georgia at that time. In Georgia. 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 You know, I love Georgia. Many of my friends have traveled to Georgia many times. It's a beautiful country with very hospitable people. Everything I will say next, they know that very well. It will not offend anyone because I'm not accusing anyone and I'm certainly not happy about it. Roman's Georgian friend Gatsu talked a lot about it on his channel. I can quote him, but I will say in my own words. Roman believes that our guests have no right to ignore all the problems while enjoying life in Russia. However, in his video about Georgia, for 10 minutes, he shows his tongue so deep into a Georgian <clears throat> someplace that he can actually feel the Hinkali in a Georgian's mouth with it. I would do the same. Because I'm sure it's nothing but truth. Things like public transport and metro and stuff like that, for example, they are cheaper than they are in Russia, which is pretty good. But Roman, why are you happy about that everything in Georgia is cheaper than in Russia? But don't talk about Georgian salaries and $8 minimum wage. Georgia is much poorer than Russia. Ask your friend Gatsu. Why don't you say a word about the huge corruption as big as in Russia? I mean, in a sense, right, like this is a more liberal and free country than Russia is, for real. Especially with the state of Russia right now, okay? So obviously being here currently, I'm... Um, it does a little bit feel like, you know, a weight has been lifted off of my shoulders, if that makes a lot of sense. Because, you know, again, I'm not like being fucking pursued by anybody. You know, it's not like I have any trouble with the governments and uh, I hope it doesn't change, you know, fingers crossed. You're happy that Russia's political problems will not touch you there? But why you are silent about the close cooperation between uh, the Georgian and Russian governments? Georgian governments send many Russians back to Putin on the silver platter. You talk about freedom, but you don't mention Mikhail Saakashvili, the former president of Georgia and supporter of freedom. He's now in jail. Why don't you show how he looks like right now? I don't want you to do that. I don't think you should do that as a guest, but you think you should and you don't. Have you forgotten or you're just a hypocrite? In the same video, Roman discusses the topic of indoctrination of children in Russia. And we smoothly move to one of the most favorite topics on his channel, a review of Russian propaganda. Roman thinks it's very important that Jack and Jessica from Los Angeles know how brainwashed they are in Russia. So they could laugh at Roman's poor parents and grandparents, his teachers from school, his neighbors, who have been influenced by Russian TV. And no, it's not about some clever tricks, modern solutions of political technologies. Roman shows only the most fucking stupid propaganda you can find. And sometimes it seems, based on the number of propaganda reviews on his channel, that Russians only watch TV 24-7. Sometimes he openly manipulates viewers by convincing them how much people in Russia are susceptible to propaganda. Like in the case of this video about uh, indoctrination of children in Russia. 
You might be aware that since September of 2022, Russia has essentially been conducting these mandatory propaganda lessons in its school. So-called uh, talking about what's important. These are extracurricular lessons about patriotism, which were recently introduced in Russian schools. Every Monday, all students are required to attend one extra lesson devoted to issues of patriotism, love of Russia, history, and so on. However, according to some teachers, uh, published manuals caused boredom and rejection on a physical level. And for this, you don't need to read Wikipedia, you just need to have at least a few children you know. Brothers or sisters, cousins, or children of your friends, and ask them what they really think. They should attend one more class every fucking Monday, every week. I think everyone is well aware of kids' attitudes towards such a thing, even if you, if you don't live in Russia. Then Roman shows a clip from a popular teen channel where kids are dancing with Russian flags and singing a patriotic song about a special operation to prove his point about brainwashed kids. I would like to say that actually it's way scarier than you think and that the young minds of Russia are unfortunately already getting poisons. So just in order to give you guys an introduction and a little vibe, I would like to show you one video. Uh... This over here is just one example, right? This is one music video that I found recently called Cool Kids Nashik Nibrasaim We don't give up our own It's basically, you know, fitting into that Z poster propaganda of hashtag Svaich Nibrasaim We don't give up our own This is essentially a patriotic music video here Released on some sort of like teenager slash kids channel on YouTube called Cool Kids and apart from just, you know, doing silly videos with like Sonic or whatnot, they are also creating Z propaganda for an audience of little children. Roman assures his viewers that this is the end. That's it. The kids are doomed. Except that under the video as much as 80% dislikes. But Roman forgot to enable the extension on his browser. 27 definitely not fake likes. Definitely uncensored comments. It it really it's it's like kids are really into it. Unless you dig a little deeper. In my deepest heart, I believe that Roman wishes Russia all the best and really thinks that on his channel. He's fighting against everything bad for Russia. I just wonder how it is that his channel doesn't have a single video about Putin's biggest friends, those who pay him money. He has released 150 videos in exact two years. These two years of conflict. 54 of them are about his life, traveling around the world, uh, trying to get a visa, about uh, entertainment and so on. After all, it was originally just an entertainment channel. We take them out uh, because the other 96 are about politics. In 30 videos, Roman talks about the realities of life in Russia, the problems, the crisis in Ukraine. That's very important and it's necessary to make such videos. In 29 videos, Roman dedicated to making sure that American Joe knows how Russians are brainwashed every day by TV. That's very important. In 18 videos, Roman destroys his worst enemies, foreigners who dared to say something good about Russia, about his country. In 13 more videos, he tells how bad Russia in everything. Russian coke sucks, Russian fast food sucks, Russian coffee sucks, Russian video games suck, Russians eat snow and they don't have Italian cheese in their stores. What a shame! And he managed to find time for six videos in which he tries to defend Russians from his own audience by explaining to them that we are not orcs, 
because I thought all Russians were terrible people and basically subhuman orcs who cannot, you know, have free speech or democracy ever because they just have an inherent gene of slavery in them. However, now that I saw your videos, I know there's at least one good Russian out there. Roman really doesn't think about why his own audience writes th such things all the time. So, what's missing? Give up? Oh yes, yes, we talked about it a minute ago. These people who pays Putin money, uh, how, how do you call them? All oh, right, European liberals. Those who paid Putin more than 100 billion euros in the first year of this special operation. And they keep paying. I can't even imagine the current amount considering oil and gas bought in Russia, oil and gas bought through proxy countries, fertilizers, diamonds, coal, and other things. Andrew Tate is clearly a bigger enemy to Russia because he likes Putin. And you should make a fourth video about that, Roman, not about Estonian Prime Minister Kaya Kalas, whose husband was co-owner of the company that has been selling tear gas components to Russia, to Russian uh, police forces, all these nearly two years of sanctions. Before that, uh, she proposed to ban Russians and Belarusians with permanent residence in Estonia from voting in local elections. Before that, she visited a NAFO troll forum when they made uh, fun of a Russian tourist in Egypt who was eaten by a shark. After all this, she proudly received the Liberal of the Year award. Sell your gas to Russia under sanctions. Oppress Russians and Belarusians on the national basis. Laugh at the Russian just dude who was eaten by a shark. And she's just one of them. Just one example. Anybody else know? It's better to make a video about Andrew Tate loves Putin or about American John in Moscow who dared to say he loves Russia. Oh my god, oh my god, some of them love Russia under false pretenses. It's a disaster. My videos in YouTube statistics, uh, they're watched uh, a lot from the US for some reason, I don't know. You have a lot of Chinese people there. Have you ever seen a Chinese person in your life who, when you praise his country uh, or culture, starts giving you a hard time about the Uyghur camps. No, 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 wait, listen. Don't be, don't be in a hurry to love us. No, 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 no. Any person of any nationality, even from countries with many problems, will piss themselves when someone praises their country. They'll be fucking happy. Everybody. Except Roman. One last thing. Uh, Roman loves the Russian flag. He puts it everywhere. I love it too. It's uh, first and foremost the flag of my country. Of all that 150 videos, Roman didn't have a single call to the Western world to allow Russians to gather under their native flag instead of uh, some invented rag that has split the entire migration into two camps. Roman doesn't willingly want to stand up for over a million Russian refugees who have left Russia, who can get a visa, open a bank account, gather under their flag for a good cause. No, just him. The problem is that Z Fox actually traveling to Europe just fine right now. <laughs> Z fucks while well, I'm not. So, uh, long story short, a lot of European consulates and embassies in Russia are still working and are still giving out visas on a pretty regular, normal day to day basis. Russians who are living in Russia right now, yes, their ability to travel and go to certain countries is lesser than before. However, they're still able to do it. If you're currently living in Russia, you can apply for European visas and you'll probably get it. And you can go and travel and do whatever you want. I can get a visa here in Georgia, but they can in Moscow. Why so unfair? Let them not be able to do that either. Wait, what million? Million Russians? Who cares? I'd rather tell you about the other millions of people who watch Solovyov every day, so that everyone knows about it. So that when a Russian comes to another country, he won't be told like, uh, yeah, my cousin attended the World's Cup in Sochi, it's cool in Russia. 
and my friend moved to Moscow when he's just in love with the local arch architecture and food. Instead, in Roman's perfect world, Russians only will be asked if they actually watch Salabiov TV every fucking day. They want to nuke the US. I wonder if Roman ever thought about why his viewers write in the comments that he is the only sane Russian. Has this thought never once crossed his mind? Why do his viewers think that the only good Russian person among 150 million Russians is only your favorite neighborhood Russian, Roman no fuckers. Bye. Okay. Блядь, это был долго.